Hello and welcome to another chess game. In this video I'm going to continue with the Magnus Carlsen and Nishgiri saga. Uh, although these guys actually played their final game quite some days ago, their Twitter fight is on as much as ever and also they are going to play very soon against each other again. So so let's see that, that Twitter. So recently actually it's not only Magnus Carlsen but also other people from Magnus Carlsen's team who are in this fight. So uh, Laurent Frestine, uh, a non-second of Magnus Carlsen, tweeted recently that an artist never asks people what they want to see, he just draws. So this actually refers to Giri and also Giri's tendency that he draws many games. Um, another tweet, this is a more complex one. So um, quite some uh, time ago, Anish Giri managed to beat Magnus Carlsen in an online uh, one-day tournament and actually he beat him with uh, sort of halving their, his, his own time. So it was a one minute tournament and uh, Anish only had uh, 30 seconds for his game while Karzan had one minute and Anish managed to win this game. And of course, as um, Giri is very often on social media, it was all over, um, always Twitter and Instagram and everything on his accounts. And Peter Heine Nielsen, who is a, who is known to be Magnus Karzan's trainer for a very long time, he tweeted this, this that high uh, Berserk than one, which refers to Skiri's um, achievement against Carson. So, so clearly somebody who, who um, supports Skiri um, said like, uh, welcome to Twitter and who are you just in the sake of uh, transparency? And then, uh, well, Anish replied that yeah, every pro account, uh, pro Giri account is of course his and he stands up for, for the rights of this. And then, uh, Another tweet from Magnus Carlsen on this is looking forward to the next event of the Magnus Carlsen tour, which is actually Legends of Chess, but he renames the uh, he renames the name of or the title of the tournament to Legends and Lunatics of Chess, referring to to Giri. And uh, well, then uh, the last tweet I want to show you uh, are from uh, Carlsen and Giri. So Carson says real legends have real achievements. That sort of refers that actually Anish Giri did not manage to win any major tournaments recently, and especially not uh, any online tournament. And then Anish uh, tweeting that uh, first he, so Magnus Carson, invites me to his legends party, then says I don't belong there. Well, actually the story is, is not true. So what happened that Anish Giri managed to qualify himself and he was not invited. Only the so-called legends who are not active chess players and were invited for this tournament and uh, the other now pl playing and now active top players are actually qualifying for this. And yeah, Dan Flirting Skills Man says also to, to Carson. Yeah, so this Twitter fight is actually very much on and it gets to be, in my opinion, at least more aggressive. So it used to be just this friendly banter while now it's actually uh, a lot more serious than that. And I also personally don't really think that it helps chess anymore. It seems to be more hurtful that these guys are just tweeting quite mean things about each other. Okay, but let's let's get back to the chessboard. So I'm going I'm going to show you a, a game from their chessable masters final. Actually, this is going to be the second game from the second day. And uh, well, I mentioned before that how many chances Giri actually missed uh, during their match. Well, this is going to be one of the major chances. So let's look at the game. So Giri started with d4, knight f6, c4, g6, knight c3, and Karzan plays the Grunfeld with d5. Well, they played some uh, King's Indian as well uh, in this tournament, but in a serious situation, he just plays Grunfeld, no King's Indian. c takes, knight takes d5, and bishop d2 from Giri. The idea is that now the bishop will recapture on c3 once the knight goes there. Um, black plays bishop g7, e4, and knight c3, and as mentioned before, the bishop takes back. Now castles, queen d2, well, this is one on theory, c5, d5, e6, bishop c4, everything is very well known, takes, takes, e takes d5, and bishop takes back on d5. So y has a very nice bishop on d5 but he is not yet developed and also his pawn structure is somewhat uh, compromised. At the same time, there is no dark square bishop around the black king, so the black king can be potentially weak. And this will come out in the game very soon. So 
uh, Karzan plays knight d7, which is the main line, knight f3. However, in this position, the main line is going for knight f6, attacking the knight and also attacking the pawn. And at the same time, this knight also defends the king, which uh, we will see would be a crucial, crucial piece. Um, but this is not what this is the main line, but this is not what Karzan played. Karzan decided to play knight b6, so go for the other, other direction. Also attacks the bishop, but at the same time, actually, the king is not protected at this point. So Anish decided to castle, and in this position, Karzan played bishop e6. And actually, bishop e6 is a huge blunder. We are only after the after move 15 of black. But this position, white has just a simple winning move that is really just flat out winning. So, had uh, Anish played that move, he would have just won in a very in very free moves actually. So, if you wish, you can stop the video here and try to find the continuation that Guri missed. So, as mentioned before, the problem is that now this knight is not defending the black king, and white can just simply play queen h6 with the idea of jumping knight g5. So knight g5 and queen takes h7 mate and actually black can do nothing about this so let's see some uh, some tries but they are all all actually very simply losing so one idea that black could do is play queen f6 with the idea of returning the, the g7 with the queen however i can just play knight g5 so now there is mate in one black has to play queen uh, g7 and in this position, white can just take on g7, king g7, and bishop takes e6. And when black recaptures, then comes knight takes h6, which is actually a fork as well. And after queen f6, knight takes f8, white is just overwhelmingly ahead of material. So queen f6 is no defense. So we, we check queen f6, that's uh, no way uh, working. And the other move, for example, is knight takes d5. Now white captures back. Queen takes d5 and comes knight g5 again with the idea of just made in one. Back and knight rook f8, and here the most precise move to win is to play simply rook f e1. With the idea that now we are threatening to play queen h7, and actually after queen h7, when the king moves, there will be a rook e takes e6 idea. Um, eliminating this bishop and just mating from h7 to f7. So for example, if black plays rook a d8, I now show the indian on the board as well, queen takes h7, king f8, and simply rook takes e6, with the idea that it say the pawn captures back, then queen, takes, queen f7 is just mate. And so I show you two continuations, but there is actually nothing black can do about it. This is just uh, for completely winning, the computer says something like plus five for, for white. So, well, it was this easy to, to win, to beat the world champion on this day, but, uh, well, Anish missed this. So Anish didn't play queen h6, but he played bishop takes e6. And now Karzan uh, did not make any more mistakes here, he actually sacrifices the pawn. So Anish said after the interview that he expected f takes e6, to which after queen e2 white is actually, well, has a super nice position, it's not winning as the other line I showed you with queen h6 was, but this is also very huge advantage. The black king is going to be weak, this pawn structure is actually also very weak, and the b6 knight is very much out of play. So of course for this reason, black does not uh, take back on e6, but sacrifices a pawn with, with the queen takes d2. So this is a pawn sacrifice because white has the, uh, the chance to to make this intermediate move with bishop takes f7 check, but after rook takes f7, knight d2, and comes rook d8, black is actually very active. And he has more enough counterplay, Karzan has more enough counterplay for the for the pawn. And here also Anish didn't continue well actually, so he probably should have just gone to f3 with the knight, which is more or less an equal position, black has quite some counterplay. Let's say he can uh, attack the pawn, attack the other pawn as well, and also some rook d3 to penetrate around there. So black is doing um, all right, for sure. But um, Giri decided to go to b3, which is actually a worse move, because after c4, knight c5, this knight is actually very loose. And in this position, Karzen had a great continuation to, uh, to actually go for the advantage. 
So he could have just immediately attacked this knight with rook c8 and after knight a6 playing knight a4 again attacking this pawn and uh, after say rook c1 rook e7 and this knight is again chased away and after say, say like knight g5 h6 knight f3 rook takes e4 well black managed to win back the pawn and moreover uh, these pieces are very active this c3 pawn is weak this Rook is locked to, to defend the pawn, so black is doing uh, very very well. But actually Karzan uh, chose a different continuation, he played rook e8 with the idea to play rook e5 and just simply trap this knight. But actually white does have a, a, a resource to, to escape his knight, which starts with e4. And the idea is that after say rook c7, which uh, Karzan played, there is the intermediate a5 move. It hits this uh, knight, and once the knight retreats, there is knight a4, and we manage to save the knight. Now, then now Karzan can take back the pawn, and after rook e1, they simplified further the position, and now it looks like that actually, well, they simplified a lot, and actually white will be able to hold the position uh, comfortably. However, in this position, uh, Karzan managed to find a move that causes uh, well, still some problem for Giri. And this is actually a very hard move. So again, you can stop the clock and uh, think about how you would continue. This is not a, a, a tactical uh, solution here. Now there is a, a, actually a very deep move that comes from uh, from Carlsen. So um, we can see that White's pawn structure is actually weak. There is this C3 pawn, but it's also the A5 pawn that is quite weak. However, at this point, it's not easy to see how um, how black could uh, attack this pawn, and uh, also white is now ready to to go in with his rook, also to activate say f4 and activate sorry f uh, four only, no f5, uh, and activate his uh, his king as well. And in this position, cards managed to find a move that uh, at first. Look, it's very counterintuitive, but then it becomes uh, less clear that it actually gives the, the chances for black. So he played the move b5, which is counterintuitive because we are just uh, exchanging the, the weak pawn of white. But at the same time, this actually gives uh, black some chances to activate his uh, majority on the queen side and trying to go for some, uh, some initiative on the queen side. So a takes b, a takes b. Now, Giri played g4, opening uh, up his king, and also, uh, well, at some point he would also like to, to push his majority on the king side. So now Karzan came with b5, knight b2, this knight is very ugly, and king f7. Now comes rook e5 and knight d6. Uh, white played king g2, and in this position uh, Karzan realized that his chances are not incredibly good to win this game. And he is uh, actually up by one point at this point in the match, so he did decide to well just choose a safe continuation with rook e7 instead of pushing any further. But yeah, so he now he actually managed to create uh, well uh, quite some some games. So this knight is actually quite passive, and he has this uh, nice pawn structure as well. So he could have uh, also decided to just try to push further, say with queen f6 and see how the, the game um, evolves. However, as uh, said, he played his b5 idea, which is very nice, but he did decide not to push it any further. So he played rook e7, which is more or less a draw, for, which is because it's clear that the, the, the knight ending is going to be a draw. So they just uh, exchanged his pawns, f4. Again, Karzen uh, uh, actually accelerates the exchange of pawns, which is, again, a science for playing for the draw. So they play exchange there, g5, another pawn exchange is gonna come, king f3, king f6. Here Anish decided to finally activate his knight. Actually the position is very drawish. So they decided to exchange some pawns there. Now the black knight tries to go and attack something here. But that's not going to be enough, knight a3, knight b6, g5, king g6, king goes to g4. And it's clear that, well, neither player has anything to do. So uh, Karzan just played knight d7, 
king f4, knight c5, and Gur decided to just go for the draw with king e5. So now Gur would like to go there and take the pawns, and uh, <coughs> this is how it goes. So Kazan took on g5, and after knight c, b c, king b5, Gur is going to eliminate the last pawn of black as well. So the game ended with uh, zero material on the board. Yeah, so, uh, well, this was a very big missed chance from Gary, and as you may know, he actually missed quite some more chances as well, and he went on losing the game to Magnus Carlsen, I'm sorry, losing the match to Magnus Carlsen, without winning a single game. So, yeah, this sums up the, the chess game I wanted to show you, and, uh, yeah, these guys are going to play again uh, very, very soon, so obviously I'm, I'm looking forward to it, and they, they're very likely also not going to stop with their tweeting, so, uh, well, let's see how this goes.